So treble digits. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's just carry on the same as we normally do, which is... <laughs> This is Trainer Talk, the podcast, brought to you by Sharon Gaskin of the Trainers Training Company and me, Jeanette Tessier of the Get Back Gang. In our weekly show, we cover news and views from our businesses, along with a top of mind topic. Of course, it wouldn't be Trainer Talk, the podcast, without the Dog Walking Digest. And every now and again, we invite a guest along to share their experience and expertise. After 90 episodes of Just Audio, we're now on YouTube as well. So feel free to catch up there. Just search for the Trainers Training Company or the Get That Gang, or download us on audio only through your favourite podcast streamer. So why not sit back with a cuppa? Make that journey or chore go a little bit quicker with our weekly inspiration for developing your training business. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Trainer Talk, the podcast, and we are, drum roll please, we are at episode number 100. 100. <laughs> 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 Who'd have thought when we started a couple of, couple of three years ago? Um, you, shall we talk? Yeah, let's talk. What do we talk about? Oh, I don't know. Let's have a little chat and see how it goes. Who'd have thought we'd have got to 100 episodes, eh? Judah thought, yes, <laughs> quite, quite an achievement, yeah, definitely, quite an achievement. Definitely, but, uh, yeah, yeah. We should be very proud of ourselves, and uh, you know, and an opportunity to um, obviously say thank you to uh, to everybody who listens to us. Absolutely. Um, you know, every week, because if it wasn't for you, then uh, then we wouldn't be here. And uh, apparently there are a few people that do listen to us. Uh, uh, amazing, but true. But, you know, <laughs> there you are. Yeah, yeah, I know, the fools. They, they enjoy listening to, to us rambling on. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for, uh, for listening to us and for putting up with uh, us uh, um, talking, sometimes making sense. Uh, sometimes perhaps not so much but you know that's the way it goes uh, but yeah it's yes. a real a real achievement very proud to have reached 100 um, so treble digits so uh, you know without further ado let's just carry on the same as we normally do which is <laughs> talk about our week so how's your week been Sharon? Well the week well it's been Easter obviously and yep. we uh, we're recording this on a bank holiday Monday mm-hmm. because you know we're so dedicated we to are. the cause obviously Clearly. Um, some would say that we have nothing else better to do but <laughs> <laughs> know what are you talking about <laughs> but you know um so it was it was funny wasn't it I had one of those um uh Easter weekends where I didn't really do an awful lot and you know and I in preparation for the podcast I thought mm, so what what did I do what did I do I couldn't come up with anything even vaguely exciting you know like well I washed Jem's bed in <laughs> <laughs> And so that all smells lovely, and she she sniffed it a bit, but then she then she decided that it would it would it met her standards, so she did she did get in it. So that was a big relief, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what else did I do? I had a hot cross bun. <laughs> um, spent a bit of money online, like I do, you mm-hmm. know. I did like a bit of online shopping. Uh-huh. Watched a bit of tennis. Um, chatted to my friend on the phone. Um, had the house valued as you do (laughs) yeah absolutely because you've only been there a year so I mean you know well you know time for a change I reckon (laughs) time for a change (laughs) and how long were you in your previous house 13 years Uh (laughs) right yeah (laughs) well I mean I think you know all joking aside because of the amount of work that you've had done on that house I think it's a very useful exercise to do isn't it just to you know make sure that uh, you haven't just uh, thrown money down the drain that it has made a difference so yeah absolutely absolutely and I'm not going to say that we're not that we're not going to move and it's all a bit of a wasted exercise because that wouldn't fit in with the with the old you know uh, manifesting what you want and all the rest of it because there is another house out there for us um who knows when it will appear um but if it appears then and and I, and also I'm not going to make this hard for myself it's like a it's just like an exercise it's like mm-hmm. a, a journey it would be it's really difficult because there's nothing on the market in the location that we want we're just literally five minutes away yeah. but um but it's almost like 
if you don't start to take those little steps and nothing will happen Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just thinking to myself as well I I was talking to Jim about it yesterday and thinking it's almost like there there are so many possible scenarios about how this could play out Mm -hmm. so it's pointless even going down any one of those scenarios it's just about okay well let's just think about that if something happens you know and then if it does do you know what I'm saying I'm just going to open the gates let's start to take the little steps first steps to have the house valued Mm -hmm. second would be potentially to put it on the market and then third stage we just see what happens after that and it's no it's no biggie you know it's uh it's just a little because now we're here it's a lot easier I was going to say always was maybe a little bit of a stepping stone Mm -hmm. because when we were moved here it was such a big deal it was such a big move yeah and it was really hard to look from a distance as well Mm -hmm. it was just really exhausting and all of it but now that you're here it's just so much easier yeah. everything's so much easier so yeah. you know exciting just exciting <laughs> adventure bring it on let's see yeah yeah you know, that's 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 how I'm looking at it oh, I know, think that's so. great yeah it's a great attitude because I mean when you were looking for like you say having to make the trip which was what two and a half hours every time yeah for you yeah. to to yeah. get down here and then trawl around and, and look at houses and yeah. and try and get a feel for because even though you'd been down there to stay on holidays mm. and that kind of thing so you knew you liked the area uh, it, that's still very different to very actually different. living in an area yeah. isn't it so yeah you know yeah. I think I yeah. think it's uh, uh, like you say uh, you can you can open the door and and see what comes in yeah absolutely I'm perfectly happy either way with what with what might transpire so so it's good yeah you know, so, so that so that's good so that was something that we did over the weekend and uh yeah, that was that was kind of it, and and the week going up to that, um, you know, the usual mixture of delivery on the programs. We had the complete trainer. We had oh, we had a really good um, uh, accountability session on Tuesday with my um, people who, who were in my Transform Mastermind. Oh yeah, because we do thirty, um, sorry, ninety day goals. So every quarter, obviously, we were reviewing the ninety day goals. Yeah. and oh my goodness, some of the things that people have achieved have just been amazing I mean some of them have been really really open and transparent and been doing dashboards and and sharing their you know their turnover in terms you know since they've been on the program and at least two or three people who have literally had their best um you know their best year ever yeah in terms of their business which is amazing you know it's just you know amazing to see that so so that was that was good um you and I had a little chat about the complete trainer didn't we, we did. you know? yeah a little chat yeah well like, a big like chat any of our chats are ever little <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's a good Indeed. couple of hours worth we had to have a break to go and get more tea <laughs> we did and then then at the end of it we went oh have we reached any conclusions <laughs> Well, not really. Well, Ish. let's have another meeting. Yeah, yeah kind of. And, and then, you know, we're, we're moving things on in little steps, just like you're saying. Indeed, exactly. Yeah. It was yeah. it was it was useful, I think, just to kind of gauge where we're at in terms of where how we think it's going uh, and what we want to think about for, for the future, which I don't think there's not there's no bad thing about doing that. It's a you know, it's a, a program that is there for the long haul uh, and we're three months in. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're effectively halfway through the first iteration uh, of it. Yeah. So now's the right time to, to do that anyway. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's like all of these things. You start talking and then you have a few tangents that you have to go off and explore. Um, but yes, we kind of got to the end of it. Right. What are we actually going to do? Oh, yeah. Action plan. Um, OK. <laughs> Let's have another meeting to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fine. It's fine. So, you yeah. know. We're moving on. There's no burning bridge. That's the important thing. So, yeah. you know, we just yeah. uh, had to make sure. And we, we do have an action plan of sorts because, you know, you you needed to do a bit of thinking about other stuff that, that yeah. you want to promote and, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, we, we are we are moving along. It might feel a bit glacial at the moment, but uh, yeah. we, we are definitely moving in the right direction. So that's the important thing. Yeah, that was good. Um, we had, I uh, managed to um, recruit a new team member. Yes, that is exciting. Yes, so somebody who's going to um, basically look after the trainer talk locals and, and get more people there. 
and uh, and and take you local leaders by the scruff of the neck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Get you all in hand. <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah, I know. Which will be no. It'd be it'd be good. It, it'd be good to have somebody else just totally focused on yeah. that. Um, um, because we know that 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 works um as a as a model but we just need to get more people there and mm -hmm. it's like when you 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 know all of us are you know the leaders and, and certainly myself when you spread you know very thin it's you know it you know what you focus on grows it always does and if we get somebody who's their sole job is to just get people to the events then you know completely the theory is that that should happen <laughs> we will we will see the proof will be in the pudding but uh, indeed so that's been really exciting and uh, the usual exercise of, of doing that has been interesting you know getting you know the usual mix of people who sent rubbish proposals and didn't answer the questions and all that sort yeah. of stuff so but you know i think i'm getting a lot you know i know i know what i'm looking for now yeah. um because I've, I've done this you know so many times now so it makes the process a lot easier mm. um although there were about three people there were there were three people who are kind of it was quite hard to choose between the three of them um so i hope i've made the right decision I'm time sure will tell yeah, exactly <laughs> but i mean that that's what trial periods are for right yeah uh, you exactly. know because uh, it, it, there are some people and i remember this from uh, back in corporate days recruiting people there are some people that come across brilliantly on paper and then you meet them in person uh, and they're a bit of a letdown uh, you know they don't match the in person experience to so they're obviously very talented at writing or they got somebody to write their application for them uh, and then you meet them in person and it doesn't quite match but even the ones who are great on paper great in person and then you actually get them in to do the job is that ah okay they're not quite what I thought they were going to be and you know I, I was very fortunate in as far as I can only think of one person um, uh, that I was involved in the recruitment of uh, actually maybe two but only one was my decision the other I was there to support somebody else and, and said to them on your head be it if you want to employ this person uh, and yes lo it turned out that they were a bit interesting um but the uh, the one that i remember uh having been involved in the decision was somebody who actually we kind of felt a bit sorry for because they'd applied for the job previously hadn't got it and it was an internal thing and then we the first person we got you know um stayed for a couple of years and then we recruited again and and it was all kind of oh well you know feel a bit sorry for her let's give her the job and it's like whoa nightmare nightmare yeah she'd never have done that so <laughs> yeah. yeah trial periods are a wonderful thing <laughs> yeah they are they are indeed so we shall see but that's all very positive and uh and then the other thing that happened last week was I finished the, the how to launch training business in 30 days, 30 days of uh, me pitching up on Facebook Live every day. Although I didn't manage every day, obviously, because of the, the old vaccine thing, which we discussed last week. Yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, but generally, but generally did. More and, often uh, than not. It's still more a, a often big than not, commitment. 20, 29 days. <laughs> so. Um, so, yeah. So that was. um. Yeah. It's, it's a funny it's a funny old program that you know it's a funny <laughs> because I always even though it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of work in the sense that you have to pitch up I have to pitch up myself every day for 30 days um uh, and you know the people who run the program they have to pitch up as well because one thing that they don't know before they sign up for the program is that I ask them to come into the group every day mm -hmm. and do their homework on a Facebook live yeah. they don't have to do that but uh, it's fantastic if they do because it's just when people yeah. see you know somebody mm -hmm. else doing that totally. there's just something about that I don't know it's like this magical connection yeah. happens it's like this energy that happens well, and it's it engagement just, isn't it it's engagement it is. and, and momentum it, and momentum yeah. yeah and so it always and because of that it's just always a great program and it's just hugely um enjoyable for me yeah. I love it and they love it um and the thing is for them about doing the Facebook live the little interesting uh, side uh outcome is that by the end of it they just feel so much more confident yeah and comfortable about going on camera because yeah, they've just yeah. been doing it every day for 30 days it's Hopefully. incredible which is great yeah you know? that is absolutely it's great and again we've mentioned this before 
on the podcast uh, and I certainly I talk about it whenever I uh, have been uh, talking to people about going on camera whether it's a live or whether it's pre-record uh, you absolutely positively cannot escape the fact that practice makes better it's mm. there's no two ways about it if you want to get confident on camera you have to go on camera and the more you do it the more confident you will get so, you know, I mean, it's it, anybody that, that tells you any differently or sells you something that is, you know, the, the magic solution um, that doesn't involve lots of repetition of going on camera. Yeah. I'm afraid they're lying. So, yes, you know. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, so that that's always a, it's a really nice uh, outcome. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, but yeah, so I always feel a bit, big sense of achievement when I finish that programme. It's like, oh. Yeah. Okay, done it. <laughs> do it every day now for thirty days, you know. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so that uh, so actually, looking back, it's uh, it's all been busy, busy, busy. No wonder I didn't do anything at the weekend. Yeah, it's quite. You needed a rest. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's really good. Well, I mean, yeah. my my week last week, uh, I might have mentioned it on last week's recording, um, but we had the first of the outdoor gym boot camps um, yes. uh, happening last yeah. week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, I'm booked in for the 9.30 slot and, and we go to a, uh, a local park uh, and everybody stands around in, in a circle two metres distant uh, and the instructor stands in the middle yelling out instructions to us. <laughs> and uh, last week was quite pleasant actually because the weather was all right um this morning was interesting oh. bit cold <laughs> bit cold hence the reason i'm kind of dressed back up in winter clothes again now um because that was i was saying to you before we started recording um that was one of those where you stand in the shower underneath and you, <laughs> after the workout and uh, my skin was so cold that the hot water stung uh, a little bit just when it's and it's, yeah. it feels amazing because you're yeah, like yeah. oh i'm getting warm it's so lovely uh, yeah. but uh, but yeah it was definitely one of those where um although i mean obviously the uh the guy that owns the gym who runs them he knows what he's doing and and uh, he got us to do certain exercises but then um uh the uh, it's affectionately known as the bloody tree um so there is a tree in this park where every now and again he gets you to run up and around the tree and back again then you come back to your station and you do another set of exercises and there were a few that were real leg burners this morning so in order to help work the lactic acid out, we had to run around the tree and come back again. Um, but uh, it was it was kind of, oh, my goodness me, this really hurts. Uh, and then afterwards, like as soon as you stop mo- moving, the wind, so cold, bitter, bitter, bitter. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so my legs got very cold, having done a, a decent workout anyway. Um, so, yeah, so that was uh, this morning, uh, as I say. But last week, work wise, I uh, had lots of, of chats, actually, lovely chats with people including yourself as we've talked about but also chats with people who are looking to um you know take the next step in their online uh, offerings and what they want to do and how they want to do it and, and that kind of thing so talking to people about that um put in uh, a couple of proposals uh for well i say a couple of but one was a proper proposal the other one was more a um right we've had a chat and the person's going to decide by the end of the week interestingly both of them said they were going to decide by the end of the week and, and i haven't heard from either of them but this was one of the things that we're going to talk about on mm. on top of mind yeah. isn't it so yeah. uh, I won't say too much uh, uh, about that at the moment but had to put that in um and then it kind of it got to uh sort of Wednesday Thursday and my to-do list wasn't looking too bad I had things that I needed to do for sure uh and then there were other things that I kind of wanted to do because I was hoping to clear some time over the bank holiday weekend to do some more writing uh, on the book um and then I can't honestly I can't remember if it was the end of Wednesday or the end of Thursday I think it might be the end of Thursday and I just looked at this to-do list and I could cry it was just like oh I've worked so hard it was really it was getting to nine o'clock at night I'd spent a long long time doing stuff mm. um and uh, it was just like how can I still have so much to do uh and it's just it's all stuff that kind of had come in or you know needed doing or, or whatever um so there was no I don't think there was anything in there that um was something that I could have done something about it was just because I was so tired and because I was trying to protect this time to do something else um however 
uh, Thursday and Friday were not massively productive days. I was being um, thwarted. It felt like being thwarted at every turn, uh, trying to get stuff done, uh, including migrating some websites for, for a new client. So I managed to do some of it, but not all of it and, and that kind of thing uh, and got other bits and pieces done. But having to sort of, you know, go out for a, for a dog walk and then come back to a message and like, right, that's what I'll be doing next then instead of what I thought I was going to be doing next. Um, and then Saturday morning, I don't know what happened, but I was on fire. I was just getting stuff done left, right and centre and, and ploughing my way through the lists. And, and I've got my list in front of me and sort of putting black line through, black line through, black line through as, as things were getting done, which is, you know, something that I do when I know I've got a lot. And, and I know that because I've got a lot that I'm I'm juggling, I will forget something. So I have to write it down as soon as I remember it. Um, and now sort of looking at the list going, wow, how on earth did I get through all of that stuff? But the relief at having, having you know, mm. got these things crossed off the list and then right that doesn't have to be done today that can be done later so one of the things that uh, I'm doing this afternoon joy of joys is preparing everything for my accountants because uh, of course it was the end of uh, the first quarter uh, of the year my financial year runs January to December um, but in any event it was my first quarter for VAT so I have to get my stuff to the accountants so they can tell me how much HMRC uh, is going to take from me which I usually have an idea about um, but what I tend to do is I tend to overestimate um, because I can't be bothered working out all the things that um, I've spent money on that do or don't have VAT included that's what I pay the accountants for they can do that so I know that whatever I've set aside it's always going to be less um, uh, than that, which is a nice feeling, actually, um, uh, especially sort of uh, using Starling Bank as I do. And so I've got all the different uh, uh, pots yeah. to, to put money yeah. in. Uh, so I make yeah. sure as soon as an invoice comes in, gets paid, I put the profit profit. I put the VAT element yeah. into the VAT box so I don't yeah. have to worry about it. And, and, you know, it's there. Um, So that's really nice. That's that's uh, something could have talked about that in our top of mind for sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, so got all of that done. So it actually the rest of the weekend was relatively relaxing, apart from um, uh, one thing where I got a notification that I've spent $31.98, which is worked out at, I don't know, £28, something like that. I can't remember. Um, and it came in. Now, very often when things are standing orders on my account, they come in early in the morning because mm. for whatever reason, that's when the banking systems put everything through. Yeah. So I wake up to notifications, you've paid for this, you've paid for that or whatever, mm. um, which is not unusual. But this thing came in and I looked at it and went, have I? And apparently I spent some money at seven o'clock on Saturday night through my business account. And I'm like, well, that wouldn't be unusual insofar as if I'm sort of browsing things and thinking, oh, that's a nifty little tool. You know, um, yeah. I'll give that a go. Uh, that's OK. Mm. But I genuinely I cannot remember seeing anything or buying anything. I've got no receipts come in at all. And of course, being the Easter bank holiday weekend is like, oh, well, I've got some hope of getting any support on this. Yeah. Starling, fantastic. Came back, mm. um, you know, virtually within 10 minutes of me sending a message to them just saying, look, this is absolutely possibly something that I have forgotten but I don't recognize it do you have any more information because it's come from a vendor called mango pay which is actually a bit like paypal so nice. unless you get a receipt from somebody going oh you've paid for this through mango pay I don't know who the merchant yeah, is yeah. Uh, so I said do you have any more information they said well no we don't but it, it's set up like a recurring card subscription it looks very similar to something back in October but I looked at the thing back in October and that was through AppSumo which was for a, a video tool hmm. it was and they were saying oh it's for the same amount and no it's a different amount that was for more and I've got that in my records I know what that was I've got the receipt and, and that's fine um, but there's nothing else that's gone through on AppSumo I don't believe I've bought anything on AppSumo so if it's an open subscription, it sounds like, you know, something somewhere I've bought and this is a, an update or a something or a, or a whatever. I have no idea what it is, though. Um, so the next step, they said, well, you've got to get in touch with the merchant to see if you can resolve it through them. So I've gone on to their website and, and finally found something couldn't find it to begin with but finally found something um because of course their their website is all set up to go hey use us as your payment provider they're like no 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 i want to i want to find out <laughs> you've taken some money from me and i don't know what it is um so yes yeah, so i finally found their um uh, their contact us ticket and they've got actually on the drop down box what is this about sales accounts 
billing mm. whatever um they've actually got one that says fraud so it's like oh okay uh, <laughs> right so this isn't necessarily an unusual thing um so mm-hmm. i've just sent them a message obviously it's bank holiday so i don't expect to hear something until t- tomorrow but in the meantime i've put you know i've locked my card so it can't be used mm-hmm. uh, and it says it's a pending transaction so it's like well it could be something maybe it's something i bought last week and now it's just i don't understand mm-hmm. because the the stuff that i remember buying i've b- bought two books on amazon Mm. that's been paid for um and that's gone through and that's a different amount anyway um and i was looking at what was i looking at something but it was much more expensive uh yeah. than that so it's like it's it's a really odd amount you know 31.98 dollars mm. is an odd amount yeah yeah, yeah. i don't i don't I'm, I'm not under yeah. unless it's somebody in the uk who is charging in dollars and therefore has to charge me VAT. Yeah. That yeah. that might make a bit of sense. But even so, um, mm-hmm. you know, the thing that I thought it might have been, it isn't because the receipts come through for that and that's a different amount. So right. <laughs> oh, well. Mystery. Keep us updated. We will it's find out next week. I know. We will find out next week. I know. Yeah. So uh, hopefully yeah. I'll get uh, I'll get that result. I mean, it's no biggie. Um, just uh, from the point of view just, of, yeah. um, you know, there, as I say, there is still this huge possibility that it is something that I've bought and I'm just completely mind just blank about. about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, at the same time, it's, it's normally, from what I've heard from, uh, you know, people just testing card information to see if they can get a transaction through before they do a bigger transaction, it's normally, you know, like $5 or something, um, you know, really small. So, yeah. you know, thirty one ninety eight sounds like a proper transaction. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, don't yeah. know what for. Oh. So, yeah, so we'll find that one out. So that was a, a, a kind of an interesting waking up on Sunday morning going, have I? What did I buy? I don't remember buying something. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. the mystery. Indeed. We will wait to hear. Indeed. We will wait to hear. Wait so, to hear. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, shall we uh, go on to our top of mind? Um. Yes, we shall. But um, I just wanted to, before we do that, I just wanted to uh, talk about that um, that uh, that cafe story mm. because I thought that that was just a really really good one to share on, on the podcast. So, yeah. so one of my um, favourite cafes, um, which obviously we can't really go to at the moment, but anyway, but one of my favourite cafes is a cafe called the Secret Kitchen, mm-hmm. which is just down the road and it's right on the beach. Um, and Swansea Bay it's just absolutely lovely uh, fond memories actually because that was when the day uh, five years ago when we first uh, dropped uh, Amy off at uh, university that was where we went yeah. to have a drink and uh, I actually it was a gorgeous day it was a gorgeous September day um, and I actually I actually had a glass of wine unlike me during the day Ooh. you know but I know a bit, bit you know a bit spontaneous there but it was so and it was always a bit like so lovely it was always like ah oh, mission accomplished you know we dropped her off and um and then it's just a really really lovely place yeah, um yeah. in the in the meantime then it kind of closed down for a bit which was really sad but then it reopened again a couple of years ago completely done up and it's just the most it's just wonderful it's just a great place lovely food lovely oh, views lovely. obviously yeah. etc but the, one of the things i really really like about them is um is is that every week they do i think it's on a tuesday they do between 7 30 and 8 30 they do a a litter um cleaning beach cleaning thing um and so they invite everybody down loads of people go like volunteers go down and then they they they, you know clean the beach pick up everybody's rubbish and then uh, feed everybody they you know with you know pastries and bacon rolls and coffee after that as a thank you which is really lovely um anyway so what happened last week was that um they just had so basically they were vandalized and uh not only was was the beach right in front of them you know there was loads of broken glass and litter you know etc cetera, etc cetera. but they'd also i think attempted to break in mm-hmm. they'd done some um, something with the water um you know so there was water going off everywhere like a pipe they broke and all, all, yeah. all the thing it was a all bit of a mess so they came in on the sunday and kind of the owners came in on the sunday and kind of discovered this um but uh, what interestingly what happened was that unbeknown to the uh, to the perpetrators um they'd also just had uh, cctv installed outside uh, the cafe so basically they caught everything mm. on on the camera so they know who these they were all teenagers yeah 
Um, but what they did, which I thought was really, really interesting. So they put a post on Instagram and on Facebook to say, uh, basically, you know, we know who you are. Um, they got pictures, but they blanked out their faces mm -hmm. and said that, you know, instead of reporting them to the police, they were going to give them the option to actually come down and join the, uh, the litter cleaning and see the effect that their vandalism had, had had. Um, and she, they said, you know, if you come down and do this, then we won't take it any further. And uh, and they did. Mm -hmm. They all turned up and they, you know, they came and enjoyed the, the beach cleaning. And I just thought that was just a, just really refreshing to kind of see that approach. So yeah. instead of just reporting them to the police, which was probably their first instinct, they were genuinely thinking about, OK, well, how can we start changing behavior? Yeah. Um, you know, which uh, which I think I thought was great, yeah. and they got such a huge level of support from everybody, um, you know, in the area. Where, so it probably wouldn't have uh, done their cafe any harm in terms of the the good PR that that they got <laughs> from it, you know. But I just thought, yeah, nice story, yeah. nice story, definitely. <laughs> no, that was lovely when you sent that to me, uh, and of course I I saw the first bit, which was uh, them putting the the social media post out mm. and saying, look here's your option or the rest of it um and was reading that and thinking oh blimey that's taking a leap, leap of faith um and then got the second bit which was no they turned up and it's like oh yeah okay yeah no that's fantastic that's really really yeah. good uh, and just goes to show that um uh, you know this idea of, of restitution um uh, can really have a powerful impact uh, mm. on people um not so much i mean you remember my story from uh, uh matey and the golfist that uh, decided that yes uh, oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. the the one that refused yeah. to to yeah, actually yeah. apologize um oh no he, he said he'd, he'd write it in a letter but mm -hmm. yeah okay uh anyway um didn't doesn't always quite work out but on this occasion it has and how fantastic is that because yeah. you know it's yeah it's just one of those things where you think yeah let's look at what might have the most impact and and mm -hmm. the fact that these uh and they were all boys you could tell they're all boys uh, from the yeah. cctv images yeah. the fact that they came forward yeah i think actually tells you an awful lot about you know where it was all coming from in the first place if they mm. hadn't come forward then you kind of think yeah well they don't really care but i suspect mm. it came out of boredom out of frustration with the the lockdown and and mm. kind of out of a thought of oh well we can get away with this but you you've got to allow people to make mistakes and then give them an opportunity yeah. to atone yeah. for, for those Absolutely. mistakes yeah. um, because none yeah. of us is perfect. And, you know, yeah. I mean, there, there are times when, and I'm sure it's the same for you. There are times when I've done stuff and thought that fit. No, that doesn't feel nice. That doesn't feel right. I don't feel like I did a good thing there. Um, and where possible having the opportunity to go, do you know what? I'm sorry about that. I, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. I, I would have preferred yeah. to. Uh, mm. And, you know, it feels great afterwards because you think, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I did a wrong thing, but I did a right thing by, yeah. by putting it right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. so that's lovely. That was a really nice story. Yeah, yeah. Worthy, worthy of a share on our 100th episode. Well, I know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well done. Light. Well done, Secret Kitchen. Yes, Swansea. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Tick, right. You've, you've promoted yeah. you've promoted the area. Well done. So, yeah. <laughs> So our hundredth episode, we thought it would be quite uh, nice to talk about what has changed for us over um, the hundred episodes because mm. it's kind of it's it's one of those milestone numbers, isn't it? And um, mm. people talk about uh, ever since the Obama administration uh, when he set out his plan for his first hundred days in office, mm -hmm. um, uh, and Biden has done the same, unsurprisingly, because of course he was uh, Obama's vice president, uh, and now he's president. He had a hundred day plan and and all that kind of stuff. And there's been and, you know, yes, Corona has happened during the course of us recording uh, 100 episodes, but actually it's not had, I don't think, as much of an impact on our businesses in terms of what we do um, mm. uh, or the way in which we run our businesses. Uh, it's much more interesting to, to look at how other things ha have changed for mm. us. Um, I don't know if, if uh, well, I do know. Uh, that you agree with me on that um but so uh, tell me your thoughts on that Sharon yeah it is interesting to look back isn't it and uh you know for a start I'm in a different place <laughs> you are entirely absolutely 
you know, I'm in a different office now, in a different place, different house. Different you know, haircut. So <laughs> different haircut. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. When we look back, you know, the different iterations of hair <laughs> that have gone on. Completely. Completely. Well, I mean, effectively, <laughs> I'm in a different place as well because I'm in the different corner of the room. Yeah. Uh, so, exactly. yeah. 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 So we've done a lot, you know, so we've had a lot of um, sort of physical change, I think, haven't we, mm-hmm. you know, over the last uh the last 100 episodes um I think yeah you're right in terms of our businesses in terms of what we have provided and what and how we have delivered it hasn't been a great deal of change other than the fact that we did obviously we did the um the future fit program yes. uh, and that was a response to uh to coronavirus clearly clearly and that then has, has sort of morphed into into the complete trainer yeah um but other than that there's there's nothing you know as I say nothing hugely different in terms of what we've delivered and how we've delivered it um my uh my team has has got bigger mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't stop outsourcing people <laughs> Outsour- right not to outsourcing you. Tasks, you know yeah um you know so so and that's had a that has had a huge impact over the last couple of years because I still now look at my to-do list a bit like you and think oh, I've got all these things to do and I'm thinking how did I do all this before yeah. now that you, now I've got all these people doing things for me but I don't understand how how it was possible to do. I mean granted there are probably a lot of things that maybe I, I wasn't doing before but still a lot of things that I am so you know that's had a that has definitely had a, mm-hmm. a massive impact um, on me um you know it has comes with its own challenges because you've one you've got to find people and then you've got to you've got to manage them um because you're not I'm not in the business of just letting people yeah you know let uh, on with although having said that I do I like to um have people in the team who you do get on with stuff yeah. and have their own ideas and yeah. have their own initiative it's like okay here's the brief now how you do that is kind of up to you yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. but I still have to you know have regular meetings keep you know keep on top of it all keep uh, you know look at targets um and also make people feel part of a team mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. which is really important so that because the more they enjoy that the more they enjoy being part of the business being part of the team the better job that, yeah. that they will do yeah so that's 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 you know that's had had a huge impact i think over for the last sure yeah years, uh, for me um what else how have I grown oh I mean this I mean you're gonna talk talk about this I won't steal your thunder you talk about that bit about the whole sort of mo- attitude to, to money yeah. uh, the, the money beliefs the money stories yeah. I think so I think we've both definitely grown over the last two years in in this respect for sure for sure and it's interesting isn't it I mean I you know you mentioned future fit and then the complete trainer there uh and I was saying before we uh, started recording the podcast It is a new program and absolutely for sure it's what's come out of Corona, but it's it's the same stuff that we've always taught. Um, It's just packaged differently to respond to uh, a need in the market, uh, which is great. I mean, you know, there's extra stuff that's in there uh, as we have grown and as we've developed and as we have new understanding of things. But it's not a complete change. I mean, even, you know looking at uh, where my business is now from from when we first started the podcast to to where it is now it's grown but it's still grown around the same stuff that I was looking at so uh, even though get that website online came on board after get that course online I've been doing websites since I started doing my business yeah um, you know pretty much around the same I built my own websites to begin with and then it, it was in the same year that I started learning about online courses so my first year of business started learning about online courses and I built the first website for somebody else and it was mm. it was just extraordinary and, and it wasn't that I was pushing that um it was just somebody that I met for a coffee that I used to work with and I happened to mention oh, I've done this and they said oh would you mind doing and, and that was it really that was how it started um so yeah so that plus the sort of the the growth outwards into the get that gang and all that kind of stuff this has all been quite organic growth uh, which mm. uh you know I think you experience in your business anyway um in, in terms of what you're offering and, and how you're offering it and certainly um like you my team has grown I didn't have a team uh to, to well I say I didn't have a team I keep I always forget that 
one of the very first things I did was get my still now accountants on board uh, because mm. I absolutely knew beyond a shadow of a doubt when when I first set up my business, doing the books was not something that was in my wheelhouse. I did not no. want any part of it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, it, that's different to um, how every... Uh, every quarter, uh, I collate all the invoices that I've had paid in, the ones that have gone out, check it against my bank statements, send it all off to the accountants so they can work out what VAT I, I owe and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, putting together my spreadsheet for that is about as far as I'll go with it. But working out which bits have VAT and, and what goes where and all that kind of, ugh, no thanks. No, no. So I have actually outsourced something from the beginning of having my business. But because it was part of when I first set it up, I always forget that, you know, they are effectively part of my mm. team uh, so that's them but what I have done um, is grow my team insofar as I've, I've brought on board a, a VA uh, who does some various bits and pieces for me this is a relatively new relationship it's only really started since um, uh, the beginning of the year uh, mm. of this year but at the same time you know we're, we're sort of we have a meeting every couple of weeks and we discuss what's been yeah. done and what's coming up and and as I am getting assets ready um you know the stuff that she's going to be doing uh, will grow uh, for sure uh, and i say getting assets ready it's, it's sort of you know the the growth of the get back gang really the only thing that's that's held that back is the fact that uh, um, the biggest impact on my business from Corona is that there has been more business. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Just more people wanting to, to look at online stuff. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, I don't think that is necessarily something that um, uh, has been a big change for, for the business uh, or for mm. me personally. I think by far the biggest difference I see between me on podcast episode one and me on podcast episode 100 is the personal development the, mm. that I've done. Uh, and you mentioned the money uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a huge chunk. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but also it's around my knowledge, my understanding, um, my thoughts around how to package what I do and the way in which I do that mm. and, and being comfortable with with outsourcing things being mm -hmm. comfortable with thinking about myself as a, as a business owner as opposed mm -hmm. to well, it's just me you know it's just mm -hmm. me doing my stuff uh and you know being being comfortable with thinking about how to grow the business which was something mm -hmm. that I kind of avoided initially because I didn't really know what I wanted the business to be but then after that because that just felt a bit too scary because it's like mm -hmm. you know I'm just getting comfortable with the idea of doing this and having this as a niche and I'm not ready to talk about growing the business, whereas that's completely different now. But by far, I'm sure the, the biggest change has been around the numbers, the pricing, the money sort of stuff, not necessarily pricing my services, although there is a bit of that in there. Um, so, for example, my one-to-one uh, -one mentoring, the price per hour of that has not changed um, because, um, you know, I, I was happy enough to price it the way I did when I first started and it still feels relevant and competitive and and you know it's absolutely it's more than some less than others uh, on that uh, but I think understanding how to feel about the money stuff Mm -hmm. And understanding kind of the the mantras and the um, the things that might be holding me back and, and you know, being a bit of self-sabotage uh, around what I was doing, that has definitely, definitely changed for the better. Um, uh, and there's, I mean, there are several programs out there that can help you do this stuff, one of which we're both uh, a part of. Um, yeah. But it is around the, the mindset uh, around money uh, and um, being comfortable to say, uh, you know, I have this value and, and that's therefore what it costs to work with me on that basis. Mm. And if you mm. don't have that money, that's not my problem. It's not up to me to reduce my yeah. prices so that you can afford it. It's up to Absolutely. you to find a way to, to afford yeah. what I've got yeah. to give um, if that's what you want to do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a whole load of stuff in there. But, uh, you know, uh, your main money learnings, Sharon, what would you say they were? Oh, God, you know, well, very, very similar, really. Yeah. You know that it isn't uh, it isn't your job to to work out you know whether or not people can afford it. You know your only job is to just show up and do what you do and provide the value and yeah. do a great job and all that sort of yeah. stuff. And then you know because because I think 
um you know it's a classic case i think when we were when we launched the future fit program i think both of us originally were sort of quite hesitant weren't we because at that time in march 2020 for the first few weeks of the the pandemic being um in existence there was just this huge i don't know culture whatever about just free stuff yeah. um, and there was a sort of energy out there um particularly on social media that you know you shouldn't be charging for anything <laughs> yeah you know and if you charge for anything that you you are you are like a, a horrible person mm -hmm. You know, and and there was you could just feel it, couldn't you? Yeah. And so we were sort of, you know, thinking about launching this program in the middle of that, and going, oh, I don't know, but but we did. We, but one, we came to the conclusion that, and I think both of us felt that the, this business about not charging anything, effectively, if everybody stopped paying each other, there would be no money in circulation, Absolutely. and that doesn't actually help anybody. No. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, because certainly at that time, well, you know, it was applying to the online world. But if you went down to Tesco or down to the down to the uh, yeah. petrol and tried to fill your car up, well, I guess we weren't doing them. But you take my point. Yeah. You know, they didn't say, oh, yeah, you, you, you yeah. just don't take it for free. Yeah, so, sure. you mm -hmm. know, I mean, none of that was happening. <laughs> so I don't quite understand this same mentality being applied to mm -hmm. you know, to the business and online world. But then I think when we took the decision to to charge and and to charge what we felt you know the program was worth in terms of its value, uh, we were just amazed at how many people came forward and signed up. And it was Completely. like, well, I thought nobody had any money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting how that works, isn't it? And I mean, absolutely. For the first, and I was I was skiing for the first week, although lockdown happened the week after I came back. Um, and I say I was skiing. I had one day of skiing. People have heard this before. We know this. Yeah. Um, but I started putting out a tip a day uh, on LinkedIn about online course creation. Um, and I did have somebody who shall remain nameless come to me after I'd done, I think I did eight tips in the end. So uh, for one week, for the next week, something like that. Um, and they were good tips. They were good steps for, you know, uh, if you follow these, actually, uh, it is possible to to get an online course up and out. Uh, and somebody got in touch after, oh, are you doing any more of those tips? No. If people want to work with me, they need to pay me. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm not giving away everything for free because that's ridiculous. Uh, what what good does it do other people for me to then not have any money and not be able yeah. to afford to, exactly. to run my business? Yeah. I can't help people like that. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, so I I do understand where where the sentiment came from which was you know people are um uh, suffering hardship uh, and all the rest of it um uh, yes but if people need to trim their sales um and i don't mean this to sound callous but if people need to um uh, reduce the amount of money that they're spending then reduce the amount of money that you're spending me charging mm. for stuff doesn't stop you not buying no. it yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of the, yeah. we all have to take responsibility for, for our own uh, place in this. Um, and, you know, like you, I was I was pleasantly surprised by the number of people who once they had time to stop and think suddenly thought, oh, yeah, that online stuff. I want to learn more about that or websites. I want to get my website sorted out. I've now got time to, to think about it. And really, um, you know, neither of us have stopped really um no. uh, since the start of the pandemic but the biggest difference has been this understanding that um you know the phrase is money makes the world go round well yeah it kind of does uh yeah. and small, yeah. <laughs> you know uh, the, it doesn't do anybody any good to not be sending uh, money no. around the economy that's what no, keeps absolutely. the economy going uh no. so you know having sort of almost fingers crossed touching wood all the other bits and pieces almost come out the other side uh although you know corona will be with us for for a long time um in some way shape or form i think that um having had that um uh, help to understand what mm. my money hang ups, hang ups were to work on that and then to uh, move into an area of having the courage to say, no, actually, you know, if you can't afford it, 
that's not something that I have to sort out, which can be really difficult if you are like I think, uh, you know, most trainers are most people involved in the training world. We are givers. We are people that want to give value. We want to help. We want people to, to be able to achieve something, to change something, to do something. So that kind of can feel a little bit uncomfortable to begin with, to sort of say, well, it's actually it's not my job to mm. work out how you can afford to to take my stuff. Um, you know, that's your job. Your job mm. is to is to work out how whether or not yeah. you can afford it. My job is to say this is what it is and, and this is the value uh, that it represents and this is what I'm charging for it. Um, yeah. You know, that you that's know. it. And my job it, is done. It, you know. If we take on all that stuff, it's a, it's a, it's like a, a load of emotional energy and yeah. baggage yeah. that that we don't need to take on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, and it leads us down all sorts of rabbit holes, which uh, which is not it doesn't really serve us to to go down. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying that I haven't been down these many many times because I have. Yeah, 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 <laughs> me too. But you know, uh, but I definitely feel that in the last couple of years I've made you know, more progress. I don't think it's fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, it's like all of this uh, mindset stuff that, uh, you know, that, that we've worked on. It's, it's, it's work in progress, isn't it? Oh, completely, it's... completely. And I think, you know, I mean, even, even now, and I was saying uh, one of the things that I think is linked to this understanding that my job is simply to say, this is what it is and this is how much it costs, uh, linked to that is kind of this separation uh, of um, the personal association with whether or not somebody actually takes you up on an offer that you've made. Uh, mm. And and I was saying just this morning, you know, and I mentioned a couple of people that uh, I was talking to last week with proposals um, uh, put in for whether or not they want to work with me. I'm actually genuinely, uh, and I'm going to say not first about whether they work with me or not or not Mm. now this is not to say that if they come back and say they want to work with me I won't care about the product that I produce that's a different thing I know what you're saying this this is more about you know that it's their choice and you know either either they will or they won't but either way it doesn't have any impact on who I am as a person it doesn't have any um, impact on my worth or my value or the value that I provide or whether or not I'm any good at my job or that because I've got plenty of people mm. that want to pay me money that continue to want to pay me money because they value what I do and yeah. that for me is just it's a, a huge breakthrough to not be so personally invested in every proposal for work the, that I put out yeah, there yeah. because I'm not feeling like uh, and this this is something that I do think does make a difference because having been in the situation where, you know, I pretty much I have to win every piece of work because that's the only money coming in. Uh, that is a different thing. Uh, you know, I am in the fortunate position at the moment uh, of having the confidence and the evidence that if one thing doesn't come off, something else will come in in its place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but don't you find though and the, and this is you know the the woo woo uh talking again and it's so true um i don't think it's just woo woo because it, it definitely works that that when that happens when you are more relaxed about it when you do let go because what you're describing there is the process of letting go yeah. and, and uh you know detaching yourself from the outcome mm-hmm. there's just something about that positive energy that means that they probably will say yes to working with you. Whereas when you're in that place of, oh my God, I just hope they say yes. I just hope they say yeah. yes. It's that desperation and fear and it sends out that negative energy mm-hmm. and what you get, what you're putting out there, you get back, yeah. which is like, they, they're going to, they're going to say no. Uh-huh. But it really does. It's a, it's a, it, the more I go into this, which I have done over the last couple of years, it is, it is so true mm. it's uh it's uh, the most bizarre thing but it, <laughs> yeah. ju- it just does it goes against all logic but it it just seems yeah. to work mm-hmm. and uh, and just picking up on the point that you made there about you know how you feel in that process like you know like Michael Neal always says you know your well-being is not dependent on your sales yeah. and you know if you can just really uh, get that concept that really helps with this as well mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, you can still be happy, you can still be a nice person, you know, you can still enjoy that, you know, just because of what's going on in your business is, yeah. it, it shouldn't be dependent on that. Oh, completely. You know? And I have to say that um, 
for me, I feel that looking back on it, one of the biggest differences and the place that it all started from was uh, was having the courage to step forward and go, yeah, this is what I'm going to niche in. This is what I'm yeah. going to do. Uh, and yeah. it, because then that the weight, I cannot describe the weight that was lifted off my shoulders when I looked at all the stuff I'd been trying to do and thought, oh, I don't have to worry about that anymore because that's not mm. my niche. And it was just like, oh, oh, actually, I'm really proud of the stuff that I'm putting out there now instead of just putting it out because I felt I should. Uh, and mm. I think I've talked about this before, you know, running my business the way I thought I should because that's how other people run their business. And it's like, oh, no, actually, it's my business. I can do it the way I want. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. I can do stuff that I enjoy and just do yeah. stuff that I enjoy. Oh, OK. And that I mean, it sounds ridiculous now, but it was such a huge revelation uh, to then put stuff out there that was I know this works. I know this can help people. I know that it can make a difference. Um, you know, yes, there there are hurdles to overcome in, in terms of finding the audience to listen to you in the first place to say this thing works. But if you put in the the work and you you and I, I don't want it to sound like you know you've got to put in the hard work you do have to put in the work and you do have to follow the process but if you trust the process I know that's one of your favorite sayings mm -hmm. if you trust the process it will come good I'm not going to say that it's all going to be wine and roses on the way because there are absolutely ups and downs that you have to navigate and and you know mm -hmm. sometimes things will work out sometimes they won't but just keep the faith Keep the faith that if you trust the process, it will come good because it absolutely will. And then you do reach this this kind of level of I don't know exactly how it works. And my logical brain is just screaming at the fact that it can't work it out. Mm. But have faith that if something doesn't come off, something else will come in because it will. Because I'm putting out this energy that the stuff that I've got, A, I'm really proud of it. And B, I know it works. You know, and, and that's as much as I can do is say to people, it's really good. And I know it works. And here are other people that say it works as well. Up to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 completely, completely. Oh, well, oh, good stuff. We could talk about this subject for hours. Yes. You know, once we get going, can't we? <laughs> we yeah, absolutely yeah. could. Should I think uh, for the sake of, of uh, listeners and viewers, uh, should we move on to the dog walking digest? <laughs> yeah, let's indeed. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, uh, so I've already described her. You know, the highlight of Gems Week is that she's had a bedding washed. <laughs> so we've, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about that. Um, but yeah, honestly, she's the other day there was an incident in Incline Gardens where she literally she it started off she was because she loves there's loads of streams down there so any opportunity she's in the water mm -hmm. and then so she went down into the into the water and then you know seemed to be having trouble getting out you know got herself stuck down there and there were two teenage girls there sort of like helping her and, and all the rest of it and they managed to get her out. And then she got out of the water and I was sort of walking up to the left. And for some reason, when she got out of the water, she just didn't see me. Yeah. So she starts running towards the right oh. and doing a panicking because she's like, yeah. looking for me. where is she? Where is she? So I was like, oh, so I sort of ran off, you know, to get. And she is literally, she is so deaf. I was literally shouting oh. at that. I must have shouted about seven or eight times. She just didn't hear me at all. Then some other bloke tried to grab hold of her and then just didn't. And then she's still continuing to run. I was like, oh, in the end, I managed to get her. It's like, Jen, you are like deaf as a post. Yeah, <laughs> poor so thing. Definitely made me realise how it's got worse, you know, that she probably can't hear a great deal. No, and the, the trouble is you can't tell her, look, if you come out and you can't see me, take a beat. Have a look around. See? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just have it. So yeah. she knows, yeah. You know, it's like, oh, bless her. So, yeah, so that was uh, that was a little incident on the dog walk this week. Aww. How about you? No, it's been <laughs> relatively quiet. Um, you know, Scamper has been um, uh, pretty OK uh, with his walks. Copper, mum's dog, has um, he's been shorn, finally, of uh, all his... <laughs> fluff you look like a giant teddy bear he really did um although unfortunately now he has been shorn of all his fluff you can see exactly how fat he is um so, 
<laughs> so he's uh, he's on uh, half rations for his food, um, which you know doesn't stop mum still feeding him from the table on a Sunday. But it's like oh, seriously, uh, but you know I, we're we're not going too hard on him because bless him, he has just come off his course of steroids, and you know we did think we were going to yeah. lose him at one point, and we knew yeah. that with the steroids he would just be hungry the entire time. Before that, I mean, he just genuinely um, in the mornings, he's not fussed about his breakfast. He will usually he'll eat the meaty part and leave the kibble and just graze on that over the rest of the day. Same with his evening meal. He'll eat the meaty part, graze on the on the kibble. Uh, and it's usually gone by the, by the next morning. Yeah. Like Jen, yeah. yeah she's like, so yeah. I mean, I guess it must be a spaniel thing. Um, yeah. But yeah. whilst he was on the steroids, he was asking for food all the time, and I can't remember if I said he got he got fed twice one weekend. Um, yes, yeah, he did. Because <laughs> he was just like, well, I'm I'm hungry. Oh, you must need feeding then. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so uh, he's uh, he's got a little little round belly uh, at the moment, which is uh, uh, emphasized by the fact that there's no hair. Uh, no fur to to cover it up. Uh, and mum mum was disappointed because uh, well a he got his hair cut before she's got it get getting hers cut. That's not until next week. Um, but b uh, apparently she said to the groomer, "Can you just take a little bit off?" Because she was worried that it would be too much to to take it all off. Uh, and I was saying to her, "No, get it." just get him shorn uh you know really close and it's not that close uh, a cut uh, but i think the, the the fact that there is such a difference between what he was and, and what he is now um it looks yeah. quite severe although she said his ears are nice they've done his ears nicely this time oh well silver lining um <laughs> on that but uh, but yeah it must be so much more comfortable for for him yeah. uh to not have all that uh, hair hanging yeah. around uh, and what okay. have you but uh, no it's good get Jeb done soon for sure and uh you know I'm right on cue um to bring this wonderful celebratory a hundred uh our hundredth episode to a close I've just been notified the highlight of my day is that my dog poo bags have been delivered oh wow <laughs> what more could you ask for on a what bank holiday I, Monday? I mean come on, on note. <laughs> <laughs> oh well we have to end there then <laughs> <laughs> brilliant well thanks for your time and your patience <laughs> lovely listeners gorgeous viewers if you're watching us on youtube um it's been wonderful to to spend this hundredth episode with you um and uh, if you are so inclined if you're a regular listener tell us what has been uh, the change for you over uh, the last yeah. hundred episodes how has your business changed how have things changed for for you we'd love to hear from you uh, about that but in the meantime take care everybody have a great rest of well it'll be your weekend by the time you get this but uh, yeah we'll see you next week bye Take care. bye